The motor can be assembled into the engine. And where I install it and how I install it, that I want to show you today. I just flipped the whole thing over. And now I'll try my luck. Let's see if I manage to put in the engine alone. I'm old and weak, you know. Now I have attached the front engine bolt. So now he's hanging in there. I'll pull it tight right away. If you forget something like that, it's stupid. The BFA engine is unfortunately a bit heavier than an original PX engine. That's why it's a bit more tedious to attach it. Now I'm going to do the rear shock. I'm just tightening the top screw from the shock. Now the bottom screw comes next. So, now I connect the shift cables above. For that, I need to disconnect the counter bearing from the Motorino Diablo. Der Motorino Diablo Schaltung wieder lösen. Das hier das this is the spring bushing in which the wire rope is inserted. Mount that too. Now I can screw the counter bearing back on. Ich baue jetzt die Schaltraste. I'm now connecting the selector box to the gear cables, because then I can adjust them perfectly and then I only have to slide them on. So, idle position. The SIP Bowden cables are luckily numbered. This is number one. It goes in from below and it pulls in my case to the first gear. It's always a little bit fuzzy here, so it's important if you install the Motorino Diablo that you always use new cables. All right, now it's through. It already can be fixed by the grub screw. And now this one. That one will shift up. Warning. Very small grub screws. They are quickly lost. Of course, it must be exactly zero here because it is zero above. I can shift here a gear and it flips back. Another gear and now you can see at the top of the control handle that it slips back. If I let go now, it will go back to the starting position. It is important that it's always back in the starting position so it clears the way again. I have to adjust the cables a little bit here on the adjusting screw shows. They can't be too tight, they have to be a bit loose. Because as I said, it is very important that everything works as resistance-free as possible. Otherwise, it won't release the catch down here. Now it's actually pretty easy, but I'll still adjust it a little bit. And then the selector box can be mounted. Aha. Now you can see very nicely, I tightened the cables too much and now it's no longer flipping back to the starting position. Now it stops there and that means I can't shift into the next gear, because the catch below is not released. Now I'm in second gear, I'll select the third and let go and as you can see it doesn't go all the way back. And if this doesn't go to the starting position, the catch will not be released either. And I can't switch to the fourth now. So it's very important that it keeps flipping back and then I can go into the fourth gear. So I tested which tension I can give to the cables. Now it works perfectly again. Now you can see what a little change in the resistance can do. Now I'm in idle. I'll shift to the second gear, let go, and it releases the catch again. So, the Motorino Diavolo with sequential gear shift is nice, but you always have to take your time and make an effort that it's adjusted properly. Otherwise, you don't have much fun with it. So, next I'm going to put the selector box onto the engine case. 
For that, it's best to have the gearshift lever completely outside. Put the gearshift lever to fourth gear. The Motorino Diavolo unfortunately doesn't go any further. Unfortunately, that's a bit fiddlier than with other selector boxes. The sealing surfaces are both new. That's why I still oil the seal a little bit so it will fit well. Now, try to switch gears so that the selector box can slide on nicely. Now, I pull it tight. There is still something important missing for the clutch. The clutch lever. But I can connect the brakes already. Good. Okay, down again and attach the clutch lever. Which one fits better? I think the shiny one actually. There are always shims here which make sure that things won't flutter around. But somewhere I have to have better ones. Cleaning it up. This thing always must be in the direction of the lever. Because if it sits the other way, then it no longer follows the lever properly. And the cables bend and break. So if that's the case, and it sits traverse to the direction of installation, just turn it into the correct direction of installation and go back and forth a little bit. And then it just slides into the correct position naturally. So if that's the case and it sits transverse to the direction of installation, just turn it to the correct direction of installation and go back and forth a little bit. It is important, of course, that this is always well greased. But I like to do that with spray grease afterwards, so I have less mess on my fingers during the installation. Okay, so I'm going to connect the cable clutch down here. It is always important to use a cable nipple with a small plate. This ensures that the Bowden cable lives longer. That the Bowden cable longer lives. In that case, I use an. SIP performance cable. They do have that. All right, that's fine. If there is a little oil in it, it will just pass through two or three times. Then it works. Then it works.